We love boxing. Welcome to another edition, y'all, of this day in boxing history. Close the door real quick. This day in boxing history, y'all. January 22nd. We're going to start from the, um, the latest dates, and then we're going to work our way forward. There's four very special events that happened today in history. Y'all study, know your history, because if you don't know your history, you don't know where you're going. And it's just good to have that knowledge and you know, to feel fortified and knowledgeable and have a great foundation to stand on like boxing history has given us so many times. All right, y'all. Let's start it off first. 1960, Paul Pender defeats the late, great, legendary Sugar Ray Robinson in Boston, Massachusetts. And in defeating Sugar Ray Robinson, he won the world middleweight title. All right, now at that time when he, when he won that title, from Sugar Ray Robinson, that title was sort of like a half title. The title of Sugar Ray, and, and mind you, this was Sugar Ray Robinson's fifth title reign. So when Paul Pender beat Sugar Ray Robinson in 1960, today, January 22nd, he took Sugar Ray Robinson's fifth title, his fifth title at middleweight. So he took the middleweight belt. But the title that he achieved was not the universal recognized title or the NBA. All right. The title that he got was the the ring title and the New York and Massachusetts recognized title. So he didn't have the NBA or the IE universal title. But nonetheless, he beat. Granted, it was an older, you know, coming back out of retirement, Sugar Ray Robinson. But nonetheless, he beat a legend and he did it on this day. Oh, excuse me. Now, that was the first out of their two matches they had together. They had a rematch. And it was the same decision as the first match, which was a split decision. So when Pender beat Robinson back in 1960, January 22nd, they fought to a split decision. And the crowd had it a draw. Now, back in the earlier days in boxing, I'm going to say between the uh, what they call the quote-unquote golden era, maybe between the, uh, let's say, the 20s through the 70s, or let's say 30s through 60s. Whatever, the era where all these grapes are fighting each other. When the fight came to a split decision, and y'all could look it up in the encyclopedia, look in the newspaper articles, look, hell, look online. When the fight came to a split decision, sometimes the, the deciding factor would be the referee. Okay? So that means if the judges had it a split and, and the crowd or the front press roll, you know, had it a split and, you know, they were saying they, don't know, they would, didn't know who to give the win. A lot of times in history, the ref for Ree would make, would make the deciding decision. So that means the guy in the ring, the guy who was, who was keeping the bout clean and making sure the dudes didn't, wasn't biting and scratching and clawing each other, he would make the final count to see who won. All right? Now, I can't remember if that happened in, this, in these two fights for those split decisions. But I know that when I was reading, researching for this fight, I saw a few fights where that actually was the case. All right, now, Paul Pender, let's get back on him. After Paul Pender beat Sugar Ray Robinson and got the, I guess, half of the world middleweight title or at least the middleweight title at the time, the other universally recognized NBA champ was Gene Fulmer. All right, Mormon dude, old school dude. Sugar Ray Robinson fought him four or five times, and I think Pender fought him once and lost. So there's two champs right now, middleweight, during this point in history. You know, it, it does come back to unification, but at this time, there's two champs. Paul Pender fights Robinson again five months later, and then he has the same decision like we said earlier. He beats him by a split decision. All right? Now, after that, Paul Pender only had... Was it three or four? Oh, let's say let's say four fights. Y'all double check. I'm pretty sure it was four fights. And after his first defense against Sugar Ray, he lost the title. Then he won it back. Uh, then he retired. He lost the title to a dude from the UK. I can't remember. He lost the title from the dude from the UK. Then he retired. And like like many other boxers in history, y'all. Paul Pender, Paul Pender was plagued by, well, by uh, brittle hands, 
Uh, he was plagued by yeah, hurt hands, brittle hands, uh, and I would say tough competition. Personally, we look at his resume, see who he fought. I mean, once the competition started getting tougher, it was, then another thing, he was stripped of his title for inactivity for defending the middleweight title. Shoot, uh, what what that article just say? Something about he's supposed to fight Dick Tiger, and he was the number one contender. And since he didn't fight him, they stripped his title. Anywho, he ended his career in 1963 as the champion. Of course, he vacated the title. He said he, you know, he had to stop because of his brittle hands. And which, by the way, a lot of boxers in history, if you just look them up, one out of every three talk about how their hands are brittle, their knuckles are breaking, it hurts for them to punch. Almost every, in every generation, tons of boxers have this problem. Okay, so it's not an excuse. You use your hands, your hands make your money. That's your main tools. You got to take care of them. Uh, but, you know, those gloves are really there to take care of them hands. But you're using them every day to spar, to train, to do push-ups, to, to hit, to make your money. So, of course, you know, you either have to toughen them up or prepare for them to be hurt up all the time. In closing, about this little known history, Paul Pender's record was 40 wins, 6 losses, and 2 draws. 20 out of his 40 wins came by KO. All right. January 22nd still, y'all. The next great thing to happen in history and boxing, we love boxing, is the birth of the Dark Destroyer, y'all, Nigel Ben. Now, I don't have much to say about Nigel Ben because I've only seen a few of his fights, none of them live, but on VHS. You remember back in the day, you go to your cousin's house or your uncle's house, y'all watch, you know, Bruce Lee movies and, and y'all would imitate the movies and they'd have old boxing VHSs or old fights. That's how I saw Nigel Ben's fights, you know, uh, a year or so after they happened before the internet age. All right, but he was born on January 22nd of 1964 in, in the UK. I think it's London, England. And ooh, man, that Joker was mean. That Joker was mean, wasn't he? He kind of reminds his fighting style, kind of reminds me of James Kirkland a bit. You know, he comes forward, he, he's swinging for gold, yo, he's swinging for the gates. I mean, he's going in there to try to knock your block off. Anywho, big ups to James, uh, excuse me, big ups to Nigel Ben, big ups to UK. Shout out, y'all. Y'all y'all got great boxes as well. I know I don't, you know, big up other areas that much, but big ups to UK. Nigel Ben, happy birthday. May you see a million more. Next great thing in history, y'all, January 22nd, 1973. In Kingston, Jamaica. Shout outs to Fox 251, I think. 251 Fox. Shout outs. And to all the Jamaican listeners. George, Big George Foreman TKOs. Smoking Joe Farasia in two rounds, y'all. Just two. Now, mind you, it was two round fight. He knocked him down three times in the first, three times in the second. But at the time of this fight, January 22nd, 1973, both of these men were undefeated, all right? Smoking Joe was 29-0, and 0, and out those 29-0 and 0 wins, only four of them went the distance, so he was getting cats out of there. He wasn't big, he wasn't muscular, but uh, like Tim Players was explaining the other day, some people know how to set their feet, throw a punch, put the weight into it, use uh, physics, aerodynamics. Science and just good placement and this good knowledge of how to make shit hurt and knock buildings down. So Joe Frazier is one of these people, all right? His career bouts, I think, was what, 36? He was 32 and 4. But at this time, he was 29 and 0, and only four fights went the distance. All right? Now, Big George, on the other hand, same thing. He was 37 and 0. Excuse me. He was 37 and 0, and only three of his fights had went the distance. All right, so that means up until this fight, both men undefeated. Joe, 29-0, 25 knockouts. George, 37-0, 34 knockouts. Of course, we all know what happens. Big George took the title. Ali didn't duck him because, you know, he could have fought Joe Frazier and then Jimmy Ellis, and he went straight for the gold to win his title back. Rumble in the jungle through him, Manila. We make beautiful history. Zoom, zoom, zoom. All right, y'all, last but not least, the great, another great thing, the final great thing, which I'm sure there's more, but the final thing for this video to happen in history, 
for boxing on January 22nd is the classic epic 1988 showdown between Iron Mike Tyson versus the Eastern Assassin, I think, Larry Holmes. All right. Now, again, Larry Holmes was an old man. He came out of retirement and hell for 2.8 mil. I already came out of retirement too. You know, he came out of retirement. Not only did he was he guaranteed 2.8 mil, but he was guaranteed a title shot. And y'all know the rest. The, the fight only went what four five rounds. He was knocked down, falling all over the ring. Tyson. And, oh, and that's another thing. This is the only time. This is a testament to Iron Mike Tyson in his prime as being you know a great heavyweight. This is the only time Larry Holmes has been knocked out in his whole career. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. I think it's, this is the only time he might have had a no contest, but I think this is the only time Larry Holmes has ever been stopped. And, and he came out of retirement to fight this fight. And then he, he retired again after that fight. Then he came back in 91 and fought to 2002 and still was never knocked out. So I think Tyson, double check me, y'all, Tyson is the only mother flusher to knock Larry Holmes out. That's amazing. And in 02, when he finally retired, he retired with uh, with a win against, what's your boy, Butterbean, Eric Ersher or something, Eric Etch, something like that, Butterbean. And he won, and then he finally retired. So this day on Boxing History, y'all, we love boxing. Let's go back through it again. 1960. Paul Pender beat Sugar Ray Robinson for the middleweight title, or half of the middleweight title. 1964, Nigel Benn, the Dark Destroyer, is born. 1973, Big George Foreman KO's Joe Frazier. Smoking Joe, y'all. You know what I'm saying? And then finally, in 1988, Iron Mike Tyson defeats Larry Holmes. Now, Thank you for tuning in for this great day in boxing history. Hopefully we'll hit you with something better and more historic on the next go round. Peace, y'all.